Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome back to Occult Perspectives. Uh, it's been a little while um, since I've done a video. I was, me and my fiance, um, really everyone at the house got sick for a little bit, but we were really both really sick last weekend. And then this, whatever it is, it's just, um, I think it's like a really bad cold, just really kicked my butt. Um, this past week, so I've been slowly healing up. I really haven't had the energy to do much. Um, I can't even really sing with my um, normal singing voice uh, at the moment. I think it's going to take another week for um, some of the sinus stuff to work through. So I'm going to try to make it through this video um, being loud enough so that you can hear me. Um, hopefully I won't have to um, blow my nose too much. Um, there's also a little space heater to add a little extra heat to the room. Um, so hopefully that's not too loud and distracting during this video. Um, since I haven't done anything for a minute, um, I wanted to go back and do some review with ceremonial magic. Let's get back to some of the basics. Um, I want to cover, um, probably starting with the LBRP. Um, the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram because it's such rudimentary knowledge. And also, I wanted to pull out the Black Brick for a second. Um, the Golden Dawn. Um, this is like the pretty much the entire material um, of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Um, most their degree work, um, all the individual work as well. Um, go back to Lesson 1 because something that I still don't have memorized, that I probably should have memorized, is the order of the zodiac signs. Um, it starts with Aries, and then it goes to Taurus, and I believe that's part of the first lesson here in the Golden Dawn. Yep, it starts with Aries, goes to Taurus the bull, and then Gemini, the twins, and then Cancer the crab. So it's fire, earth, air, and water. And that's why in uh, rituals such as the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Hexagram, we've, talk, we've talked about this before, um, instead of the East being attributed to air, the East is now attributed to um, fire because that's the first zodiac sign. Um, that's the order, the order that it goes through is the fire, earth, air, and water. Um, it, and you're working, when you're doing the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, you're working on the physical plane. Um, when you do the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Hexagram, um, you're working with um, the Zodiac. So the, the Pentagram Ritual is more um, Earth-based, whereas um, the Hexagrams, the East becomes fire, the South becomes Earth, the West becomes air, and the North becomes water um, to align with this um, quadruple thing that there is going on here because after cancer which is the fourth zodiac sign and and you would be able to recall this clear clear if you had all these zodiac signs memorized in order which i i don't um i i should know i should know the order of them by now but it's leo number five leo and then virgo and then libra and then scorpio and it follows that same pattern fire earth air and water and then once again with Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. That's that same, that same order of elements. Fire, earth, air, and water. And some of these um, animals also correspond with the lion of the sign Leo corresponds with Archangel Michael in the south and um, one of the things that Damien Eccles um, recommends that you um, correspond with with each Archangel or each quarter is also a season so Archangel Michael is attributed to summer you know think of the the sum the season of summer you know as you are um, invoking Archangel Michael um, with Gabriel in the West, Gabriel is attributed to fall. Oriel in the, or Oriel in the North is attributed to winter. And then Raphael um, would be spring. Yes, Gabriel is fall. Oriel's winter. 
Raphael is spring and Michael is summer. So those are further correspondences other than the, um, the colors of the robes, which of course, um, Raphael, um, yellow robes with purple, with a purple tinge. And I actually have, um, I forgot to bring it with me. I'm not going to run back and grab it right now, but I have, uh, my fiance got me four directional, like little wands and the one for the East um, is purple, which actually fits perfectly because Raphael, he has the yellow robes with the purple um, tinge on it. Um, Michael is, I usually envision him with red robes. Um, some say like a green tinge on it. I don't usually envision green too much with him. Mostly just I focus on the red, um, the fire. Um, Gabriel, um, blue robes with an orange tinge. Um, and the orange also corresponds with Yasad. Um, in the middle pillar ritual, when you um, say Shaddai El Kai, and we're going to get into that later, some of the translations and stuff, because we're going back and hitting basics of these rituals, the middle pillar, the lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram, the Shaddai El Kai, and then you say Gabriel um, is associated with um, Yasad, um, which is in the chakra system, it's the orange chakra, but um, because it's a different system, the entire middle pillar thing. It's um, dark purple and is, and is associated with Gabriel, but it still all corresponds to that same stuff, um, going back to Gabriel's robes with the orange tinge. Um, and then the north, you have Oriole with green robes that represent earth, and I think like brown, brown tint to also represent earth. And the wand that I have is, it's for Oriel, the north is green. It's a green wand with a stone on it. Can't remember which stone, but it also has some brown on it, so it's perfect. Um, the colors correspond perfectly. Um, I will try to remember to grab that either later on in this video. I'll show you those wands, or I will wait until the next video. Um, of course, also in this first knowledge lecture, this is all going back to basic information. The elements we should... I like to envision sometimes the, um, you know, air is um, an upward triangle with line through it. Fire is the upward plane triangle. Earth is the downward triangle with the line through it. And water is the plane downward triangle. Sometimes when, in the Lesser Banishing Ritual, the pentagram, when I envision the archangels, I also will see the emblems of the element that corresponds with the quarter. This can sometimes help with visualiz visualization. Um, when we're calling forth these angels and such. Now I'm trying to see if there's anything more on here. Um, I, at one point, I did have all the Hebrew letters memorized, and this was something I wanted to bring up, too. Um, like, I had memorized what their meaning was, because each one has a corresponded meaning, like it corresponds with um, an item or an animal. Um, I used to know all the names of the letters, um, it really doesn't play too much unless you're unless you're going to get into hidden symbolism within the Bible, like being able to read true Hebrew and um, picking up on the gematria and stuff in the Bible. Um, but when it comes to stuff like the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the uh, Pentagram, you could envision, um, it's recommended in Donald Michael Craig's book, I believe, if you can imagine the Hebrew letters that correspond with each um, quarter in the pentagrams, like if you can see yod Hey vau Hey, the letters, you can visualize that within the pentagram to make, um, to give it even more power. Um, but as far as actually memorizing all of the letters and numbers, not absolutely necessary, not as necessary as I believed it to be when I first starting, started doing ritual magic. Um, it's not until you get to like the LVX and you start spelling out like I-N-R-I, the sign of Osiris slain. Uh, we may be able to get to that later in this book. Um, I did mark that spot in Donald Michael Craig's Modern Magic. And then it also recommends in here, of course, that you, which I do have memorized at this point from starting from the top of the Tree of the Life, um, Kether, the top of the Tree of Life, down to Malkut. If you can memorize the names of each of the Sephiroth, what they mean, you know, Kether, the crown, um, Hokma being um, wisdom, and then Baina being understanding, um, and you move down. Um, if you can memorize all those, it'll just help things click more for you, especially when you're doing um, 
practices like the middle pillar, um, when you're visualizing all of this Sephiroth, you know, being lit up, the tree of life is lit up on your body. Um, let me go ahead and skip to lesson two in the Golden Dawn book real quick. Um, lesson two. There's nothing really in this spot that's too important until you get to rituals that are beyond really what I teach because I I primarily do, I just do white magic anymore. I don't really mess with anything else. Um, so like lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram. Lesser invo invoking ritual with a pentagram. Lesser banishing ritual with a hexagram, LVX. Um, I would like to learn the Rose Cross at some point and even go over that on this channel. But that, people ask me, um, somebody asked me why I, you know, made this channel. And it's to help people that are trying to learn similar things. Um, and, it, and it's so that it's not all just held up within me. Um... And so I can leave something behind. I can take little tidbits from different works, which I'm doing in this video, um, and bring them together and help add that to the compilation of information that we have so that the information can be understood even better and then be passed on again. Because, you know, I'm not going to be here in this manifested form forever, and I want to spread the information that I can um, and help people along their path. So kind of immortalize this knowledge, which isn't really my knowledge, which has been rediscovered, and um, I'm trying to pass it along um, in a positive manner. Okay, so... <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the, um, the Kabbalistic Cross, the translation of this. When you're pulling the beam of light down, Ata means you, or more poetically, thine. Um, the visualization given above with the pointing the dagger down or your finger is the purpose of indicating that you are linking your higher self with the divine. Malkut means kingdom. And the Kabbalah refers to the physical or elemental plane, planet Earth. That is why you should be pointing down. Vigbara means in the power and the glory. Um, when you say Vigdila. And Leila means forever. And Amen. So, it's the Lord's Prayer, essentially the end. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So it's a very powerful statement. You're linking that as above, so below. Um, so it's important to just remember what you're saying, you know, remember to be conscious and aware of, of what you're saying when you're doing these rituals, remember what they mean. Um, I've gone over this in previous videos, but I just wanted to touch back up on it. Um, the sacred God name yod heh vah -Heh. It's the letters, okay, Yod, and I wanted to refer back to the black brick because we could go over what each of these means, each letter the symbol of it. So Yod is hand. Hey. Window. Vow. Pin or hook. Hey. And then Hey was a window again. So and we also know that uh, Yod is archetypal masculinity. So window. The first H, He, superior, so Yod He, represents archetypal femininity, the Taoist Yin, or the Young Yin Anima. So He, I'm sorry, Yod was hand, um, I said window. So the first one, the archetypal masculinity, hand, that's interesting, He, window, is the um, archetypal feminine. That's interesting. I think there's some deep implications there. I don't think I'd even um, made that connection before. Va um, is a pin or a hook. Um, it's physical masculinity. That's interesting. And then hey, again, 
inferior. Hey, inferior represents physical feminine. Um, and hey is window once again. Um, either way that it's used, I believe. So it's all four of these. It is archetypal masculine, archetypal feminine, um, physical masculine, and physical feminine is what it seems to be. Um, all united. So that's a pretty strong name of God because it's all these forces combined. Um, Adonai is the second um, God name that you vibrate. And this means um, it's a very fiery version. I believe it means my Lord. Yep, he said it means my Lord and not just Lord, as some writers say. So it's very personal. You know, when you're vibrating Adonai, it's my Lord. Um, God works with those who try to reach out to God. You know, it's a, it's a mutual relationship. Um, we're trying to link ourselves with the divine, um, regardless of whatever dimension or time space we're in. We're meant to be here. We're meant to have these experiences. But at the same time, if we're not remembering where we came from, if we're not channeling more, you know, positive influences into this world, that's what's going to make the change. You know, that's what's going to do the great work. Um, moving on. So, hey, hey, yay is usually translated as I am, but more um, accurately, I am what I shall be. Very powerful if you um, take the I am statements of St. Germain into account. Um, there's major implications of this. I am unmovable, I am unshakable. You know, the true God is the unmovable God, the unnameable God. He is what he shall be. She is what she shall be. You know, it's even beyond dualities on, on that kind of a level. And then the final God name that you vibrate in the lesser vanishing ritual of the pentagram and lesser invoking ritual of the pentagram is Agla. And this is in um, no Terracon, because um, it's an abbreviation for Ata Gibor Leo Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai um, it means thou art great forever my lord and Adonai is in there so it's a combination of some other words and Adonai thou art great forever my lord um, so I just wanted to go over that again um, you know just remember what those things mean you know when you're um, vibrating them during the ritual um, Agla, I think, you know, corresponds very heavily with the element of earth. And I always try to imagine, um, as I'm vibrating that, my, f you know, physical manifestation coming to fruition because it's the earth quarter, it's the earth element, the earth element, um, in the north. Um, so my, thou art great forever, my Lord, my Lord always abundantly, um, is manifest in my life. Um, the creator, I have such a very unique, you know, um, connection and relationship with the creator and that's what ceremonial magic especially this white magic should really do that brings you closer to source um and we were talking about some of the correspondences with the archangels you know Raphael carries the caduceus one archangel gabriel has a cup a chalice um, encrusted with gems surrounded by waterfalls you know trying to feel the water archangel michael has the sword um, that is used, um, it's very similar to the symbolism of the cherubim, I believe, that guard the um, Garden of Eden. He's this soldier of God, you know, he's the righteous soldier. He's there to keep the, the evil at bay. Um, and then Oreo holds um, sheaves of wheat, plenty, um, some symbolism of, of bounty, you know, plenty from the earth coming from the Great Mother. Um, lots of people like to view... Oriel is more feminine, which I can see that. I still see, I when I picture Oriel, it's typically still male, but it's very masculine. And now that I've added Metatron above and Sandalphon below, um, usually I see Sandalphon. Sandalphon is a little more feminine sometimes as well. I, those are two similar angels because they're so, they're, they're earth corresponding angels. Um, but I see Sandalphon more as like, you know, it's the brown tunic. It's more like in the dirt, so to speak, like grounding, grounding you into Malkut 
and Oriel's like, I see like this forest, more green um, type, almost fairy-like. You know, a lot of those things, it's, it's not super important. It's just what works for you. Um, that's what's really important when you're um, doing the visualizations of the archangels and such. Um, I wanted to see if there's anything else I really wanted to cover real quick. Um, the Lesser Vanishing Ritual of the Pentagram. Also remember to um, remember that it's the pentagrams are typically blue flames. Um, I've tried to work so much on you know being able to actually see the blue flame. Some days are better than others. Um, practice makes perfect. Um, yeah, imagine, you know, when you're using the sign of the enter to go into the pentagram, that the energy from the earth is moving up into you and being pushed out to the ends, through the ends of the universe. I mean, you're not supposed to be using your own energy, but use the energy of the universe. Here we go. Draw the pentagram. Be sure to visualize the figure as a flaming gas jet blue pentagram as you draw. Inhale through the nose. As you do, feel energy flow from the ends of the universe through your nose and body and down and out of the bottoms of your feet to the center of the earth. So inhale. As you inhale, both hands should be raised to the sides of your head by your ears. Um, Step forward with the left foot. At the same time, thrust your hands forward so that they point exactly in the middle of the glowing blue pentagram. As you do this, you should exhale and feel the energy come back up your body from the middle of the earth is where it was before, moving up out your arms and hands through the center of the pentagram and to the ends of the universe. Visualize the energy as brilliant fire engine red. You should use the entire exhalation to vibrate the god name yod heh vau -He. Okay. Yep, I think that's it on the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. Um, we're at 22, 23. We'll see how much longer I can last here. My voice is already getting kind of tired. Got a little bit of water here. Um, during the middle pillar ritual, um, a hey yay when you're vibrating that, um, remember that that's the same as the West um, in the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, which is I am what I shall be, um, or I will be, um, and then the Metatron is the archangel associated with that, um, as you pull the energy down to your throat area, it's yod heh vau -He Elohim. So, um, it could be translated to the Lord God, but as we said before, yod heh vau -He is the archetypal masculine feminine and the physical masculine and feminine all combined, um, plus Elohim, which as, if you've watched some of my previous videos on um, the Bible, especially in Genesis, the word Elohim um, is usually translated as, in Hebrew, as feminine, feminine plural, which is interesting because in the beginning, God, the gods, plural, which would really be goddesses if it's feminine, plural, created the heaven and the earth. So there's some discrepancies and stuff there. Um, but overall, it translates to the Lord God. Um, so these are all just basically different ways of worshiping this divine source. And you're calling the energies down into your own being. So it's like you're becoming one with this divine source. That's how we really take on the properties of, of creator is by praising cre you know the creator. Not only praising the creator, but also pra praising the creation because it's all so beautiful if we learn to look at it properly and really go within ourselves and, and find peace within ourselves. And I think these rituals, for me at least, and hopefully the people that I'm sharing all this with can benefit from this as well. Um, so yod heh vau -He, Elohim, as you pulled it down to the throat, um, means the Lord God. I did not look up, however, the um, name that you associate or that you can vibrate at the throat. 
It's the um, Elexarpe Komananu Tabe Tuim. I don't know what that translates to, but it's from another language called Enochian or Angelic, um, Donald Michael Craig says. Um, of course, um, I'm reading out of Modern Magic right now. Um, I've used this book so many times before. It's such a great one to go back to. Um, as you move down in the middle pillar from the throat to um, the you know, kind of the chest area. For a while, I was pulling the energy down too far. I was thinking it was more associated with, like, kind of the gut area, like where the solar plexus is and the chakra system. But it's more it's more up in the chest, like right, right in here is where you should have, um, where it shows it in the picture, too, in the book. Um, yod heh vau heh And I like to envision this just as this bright sun. And then this is when you invoke uh, Raphael as well. And it translates to, here we see yod heh vau heh again. It's Lord God of Knowledge, um, is what the whole thing translates to. Moving down to the, um, the sacral chakra region, which is, um, you, we envision in the middle pillar ritual as the dark purple, Shadayel Kai, means the almighty living God. I think this is really important because this is where the reproduction um, takes place, um, where you're you know, your reproductive organs are, are in the seat of power, the almighty living God, that's like your life essence, your life force derives from this area. So that name, it just makes a lot of sense um, to be the almighty living God is the translation. And then of course, Adonai Ha'aretz, as you pull down the energy into the earth itself, you know, part of the ball is supposed to be above the earth covering your feet and the other half, you know, being down into the ground. Adonai Ha'aretz translates to Lord of Earth, which makes complete sense um, with the Archangel Sandalphon. Um, let's see what else I've got going on in here. I think that covers the middle pillar stuff um, as far as the translations of those god names. I don't know that I actually did get to that in the middle pillar um, ritual video that I did where I basically teach you how to do the middle pillar ritual um if this is your first video of mine that you've watched um please go back and watch other material because this is a review and this is adding on a little bit more um correspondences and such to practices that we have already talked about and covered um so this will be added to the ceremonial magic playlist um that's what most of my audience seems to be based around is um those get the most views for the most part um, so I kind of want to stay focused on that. Um, and a lot of the videos, figured it would be good to go back and um, cover this material again. Um, so this will be added on to the Ceremonial Magic playlist, but go back and watch the other videos um, if you have not watched those. Okay, so in the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Hexagram, um, the name that you vibrate at each hexagram as you go around um, is Ararita. And this is another notericon, um, because the, the entire phrase is pretty long. It's echad rash, echu do to rash, yechu do to, temur ato echad. As always with translated Hebrew in this book, the CH in this phrase is pronounced like that in the Scottish word lock. So I, I wasn't really pronouncing that right at all. <laughs> Um, so the above phrase represented by the notericon, which we say Ararita in the ritual means one is God's beginning, one principle is God's is one principle is God's individuality, God's permutation is one. Let me read that again. One is God's beginning, one principle is God's individuality, God's permutation is one. This clearly states that the Kabbalistic attitude that no matter the name by which you call divinity, there is only one ultimate divinity, one divine source which can be summoned. Everything is of divinity, or as it is said in a ritual, there is no part of me which is not of the gods. So pretty profound stuff. It's just that reiteration of, you know, everything being one. You know, God is complete perfection, unity, consciousness. So... You know, that's, you can't really beat that. And that's by pulling this influence, you know, down into the physical world. 
you know, bringing, bringing source here down, you know, with us to the, na the here and now. Um, and it's a relationship that works both ways. It's flowing up and down. And I think the last thing I wanted to go over, um, I think I'm going to hold off for until another video to talk a little bit about this book right here. I did finish reading this, The Three Magical Books of Solomon. Wow, what an intense read. I don't, this is not beginner material by any means. Um, and I think Donald Michael Craig, um, he explains in, I think it's chapter nine of, um, or lesson nine, that's when he starts talking about the Goetia and how to call forth these spirits and stuff in a more straightforward manner. Um, that's stuff that I don't, like I said before, I, I only work with white magic. I'm only trying to align myself more with source. There's certain knowledge I realize that's not for me yet. It's, I don't need to go summoning certain spirits. If that's what works for a certain practitioner and they succeed and let success be their proof, I'm not against that, you know, but I, I do not condone anyone doing any of those practices without knowing all of the knowledge beforehand, because that's, that's really intense work. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's not good karma if I'm promoting that people go and do that. So we'll discuss, you know, maybe in future books, um, we'll talk about this book a little bit and what it entails. It is a very interesting read. Um, and we'll also get into um, a more linear um, educational version in modern magic if we get the time. We'll delve into some of that stuff more from a studying or like a studious perspective, not so much as a doer because I, I don't work with that stuff. Um, I only work with the practices that I teach um, on this channel. So let's go over... Um, the analysis of the keyword I N R I and you draw in the air um, I'm gonna go back to the Hebrew letters here Yod which um, before we found that it meant fist um, I'm trying to find that page again it's the only thing about some of these books I need more bookmarkers and such here we go Yod, hand, nun, means fish. Resh, means head. And Yod, again, is hand. And there's also somewhere in here where it corresponds each of those. pretty sure it corresponded each one to a different um, deity as well like one was to Isis maybe I did not because I believe that's what happens when you're raising your arms and you're saying Virgo Isis mighty mother Scorpio Apophis destroyer soul Osiris slain and risen let me see if I can find that real quick I may have covered that in the LVX video. I'm not entirely sure. Here we go. Yod is associated with Virgo. So Virgo, Isis, Mighty Mother. Um, and that meant hand. Fist. No, hand, I'm sorry. Calf is fist. So Yod is hand. Nun, which is fish, is associated with Scorpio, actually, which makes sense because it's a water zodiac. Resh, or Resh, is associated with the sun, soul, or Cyrus. Um, and it means head, so that correspondence could make sense there. And then Yod again, um, Virgo, once again, hand. And then there's also numbers that are associated with these if you wanted to get even deeper into the um, symbolism. But I think that pretty much, yeah, that covers what I wanted to cover. That way, so as you're doing the LVX, you have a little bit more in mind some of the correspondences of these letters. And as you're raising the energy up, 
you know you're doing the Virgo, Isis, Mighty Mother, Scorpio, Apophis, um, Destroyer, Soul, Osiris, Slain, and Risen. Um, there's a lot happening simultaneously um, because you're working through these cycles, all three of these cycles in one go. Um, it's like, I would see it as an acceleration of the self because um, it's the sign of Osiris slain is the first one given. And then the sign of the morning of Isis, working through the darkness of Typhon and Apophis. It's the seasons as well. Um, the sun rising again, all these things, all these zo zodiac influences are incorporated into this ritual to subconsciously, you know, to subconsciously mesh your energies in with these cycles and um, basically adding to your power, but also aligning you more with source, aligning you with the cycles of the planets so that it's more as above, so below. You are fine-tuning yourself to the universe, so to speak. I may not be explaining it quite the best, but um, yeah, I, I'm trying my best. Okay, I think that actually pretty much covers everything I wanted to in this video um, because it's getting quite long. Um, I figured I would talk about the three magical books of Solomon later on. But yeah, this this video has pretty much been review. Um, I just wanted to go back over some things. Um, for me personally, doing the practices, even when I've been sick, um, like yesterday, I still didn't feel really good. Today, I'm still feeling kind of bleh. But yesterday, I think it was, or the day before I did, the LBRP and the middle pillar twice in one day, um, which for me, especially if I'm not feeling that good, is kind of rare, but I've had some extra time at home to recover myself. Um, I think that covers it, guys. Um, just keep up on your practices. Remember to just do them. The book knowledge, <coughs> the book knowledge, all this stuff, it really only gets you so far. I have so much stuff I want to read. The Secret History of the World. Um, I still need to finish that. That's a great, it's a great book so far. Um, another Israel Regardi book, The Middle Pillar. Um, has so much Kabbalistic stuff in it I want to get to. Um, the book of, it's actually spelled Rezael, but it's the book of Razael. I have learned about this recently. And we got ourselves a copy now. Um, I just haven't been in the super like reading mode lately. But it's essentially the book that was given to Adam and Eve after they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden because Razael, the archangel of, he's the keeper of secrets, and the archangel associated with the, um, the Sephiroth um, Hokmah on the Tree of Life, Wisdom, he felt bad for Adam and Eve, and it was the knowledge to like redeem them, to bring them back to the state of grace. So he felt sympathy for them. So I think Razael's a very cool archangel, and um, I think... He plays a very significant role for me personally in my life, uh, most definitely. Um, these archangels, are, they're truly like higher forces of ourselves. And if we just if we just tap into it, just keep the practices going and um, learn to work with these energies. And you can you can get through any trial in life. I, I truly believe that life hasn't always been the easiest lately, but this connection that I have with Source that has enabled me to experience and see so much more and do so much more and meet so much more interesting people and just become a part of something that almost feels like I'm in a fictional movie, you know, it's so beautiful. It's allow this magic to unfold. It is real. It is happening. Um, we are manifesting heaven on earth. I'm glad all of you are here with me on this channel. We're all one big family. Um, at quite a few subscribers now. Um, I think this is the 50th video. Um, and yeah, I'm, I think we're right around 200 subscribers, um, if I remember right. So that's, that's awesome. This channel hasn't even been up for a whole year yet. I think it's around March 5th or March 8th, somewhere in there. This channel will be one year old. So we'll be celebrating the birthday here on Occult Perspectives. So, all right, everybody, peace and love, take care, um, stay safe, stay healthy, may you be healthy, may you be happy, may you not just survive, but may you thrive, peace and blessings, fam, take care.